What's on, ladies and gentlemen? My name's Ross. I like games. And today, we are continuing our look at all of the new cards which have so far been shown off from Wave 2 of Keyforge, Age of Ascension. We are taking a little bit of a look at the cards from the House of Dis. And ladies and gentlemen, this is one of my favorite houses. Although I've got like three favorite houses and there's only seven houses. So I don't know if that's just a little bit too cheeky. Hey ho. So this then, we've actually had six cards revealed from this so far because they had five cards revealed during the live stream, but we also had the image and one of the cards, there's two cards on there that are really readable. This is the one on the website. And one of them is a disc card. So you know, Go this. So let's start off by having a look at Banish. You get an Ember bonus when you play it, which is nice. And you get to put an enemy creature into your opponent's archives. Now, largely, this is going to be a very nice thing. There are downsides to this. Let's say, for argument's sake, you put an Urchin into their archives. Well, Urchin's got a really nice coming into play ability, which steals one of your Ember. And if you put it into their archives, they can take it back. Now, at the beginning of your turn, you have a choice to either take every card from your archives or none of your cards from your archives. So if you go and put someone like an urchin in there, your opponent on their next shadow's turn can just take the urchin out, play it down and steal an ember. Not the best use for it. But then again, let's say there's something like a Khalifi dragon. Khalifi dragon is an extremely powerful creature, but it can only be played if you've got seven ember or more. So even if your opponent can take it out of their archives, they might not have seven ember to play it back down again, which is kind of hilarious. The other thing to remember here is that you can kind of screw over your opponent. Now in my video about archiving, I'll try and remember to pop a link in the description, I explained that what you really want to do with archiving is build up one house in the archives so that, oh, I've got six logos cards in my archives, Pick logos at your house, take your archives, have a monster turn. So if you know your opponent's doing that with logos, you go and put a Brobnar card in their archives, and then all of a sudden they can take their logos cards, but they've got to take the Brobnar card as well, and that's going to be clogging up their hand. This could be very nice indeed. Just don't give them something of a really good coming into play ability. Probably the card which has generated the most discussion of all of the spoiled card so far is binding irons when you play it your opponent gets free chains now this is weird because and correct me in the comment section if i'm wrong please i am fairly sure there were no cards in the first set call of the archons which actually chained your opponent this chains you so there's plenty of cards like gateway to this whereby it's got an incredibly powerful effect, destroy each creature, but then you gain free chains. Binding Irons actually gives your opponent chains, and of course this then raises a question of, hang on a second, is this going to keep happening? And essentially, if you are chained, when you would draw cards, you draw fewer cards and shed a chain. So if you've got three chains, you draw one fewer card and go down to two. But if you've got 15 chains, you draw three fewer cards and then go down to 14. So this is just a way to control your opponent. And some people have pointed out that this is kind of in a way not too far off from what Succubus did back in Call of the Archons, which was another discard, which stopped your opponent drawing quite as much. They drew one fewer card when they were refilling their hand. But Succubus was a creature. Succubus could be destroyed, etc., etc. Whereas, and it could be destroyed without ever taking effect because you draw cards at the end of your turn, you could always stop Succubus having any effect. Whereas this, you put chains on, and then the chains are there. This is going to be a very, very interesting precedent to see if we get more cards like this in the future, which add chains to our opponent. We're also getting Streak. I think it's pronounced Streak. A two-power creature with Elusive, so you've got to attack it twice if you want to take it out. While Streak is not on a flank, your opponent refills their hand to one less card during their draw hand step. Yeah, you know that Succubus card I mentioned earlier? Well, this is kind of like Succubus. It is very much like Succubus. There are a few differences. It's a two-power creature rather than a free. 
but it's got elusive. I would much rather, for a character that I really want just sitting on the field doing good stuff, and I don't want to fight with it, so essentially I'm just going to reap any time it's a diss turn because I can, I would much rather have elusive than one more power. So that's quite nice. Now, the other really important thing to note is... It can't be on a flank. Now, when you put your creatures down, you choose where they go. They always go on a flank. So, essentially, when you play down Streak, try and make sure you've got two creatures in hand. Put Streak down on a flank. Then put another creature next to it. And then you're golden. And then it's just like Succubus. We know that not all the set one cards are making it into set two. So, there is a very, very good chance that Succubus is not in set two. No confirmation yet. But we know that the majority of cards being ported over are rares rather than commons. So this is just another way to hurt your opponent. And yes, clearly the combination of Streak and Binding Irons could be super, super annoying. But I'll tell you what, ladies and gentlemen. If you want to stop your opponent drawing cards, this might be the house you want to go for. We're also getting Unlocked Gateway. Now this is one of the cards with the new skill, Omega. After you play this card, end the step. You have to play it as the very last thing that you do for your entire turn. Or the step where you're playing, etc, etc, etc. So it's kind of like gateway to this. Except you don't have to take any chains. But when you play it, your turn ends. Now this is really important. Because gateway to this, you can play at the beginning of your turn. Get rid of all your opponent's creatures. And then go ahead and play a whole bunch more. And you can get all your creatures down after your opponent's lost all of theirs. It's brilliant. Whereas Unlocked Gateway is... That's it. That's the end. You still draw cards, etc. But that's the end of your playing, using, discarding phase. So you've got to put down any cards you want for the turn and then play this. You don't get the chains. Not getting the chains is lovely. But any creature that you've played down during your turn is lost. Now, this might not always be the worst thing ever. Tourette, when you play it, you get to capture free ember. And that's the main reason to play it. So it's not quite so important if that creature then gets knocked out. And similarly, you've got something like Dust Imp that gains two ember when it is destroyed. So to be honest, you would want to play that down and then immediately destroy it. There are exceptions, but generally speaking, this is an extremely risky card. But it's another great example of why this Omega keyword exists. This card would be too overpowered, hence why in set one it had three chains attached to it. But when you play it as an Omega card, it's not that overpowered. Now we also have Yurk. It is a 4 power creature with a coming into play ability. Choose and discard a card from your hand. Hang on a second, why would that possibly be good? Well remember ladies and gentlemen, during your playing phase you can play, use and discard cards of your active house. What you're not able to do is discard cards not of your active house. And you may have a card in your hand that you drew last turn that you don't want but it's a diss turn, so you're not able to discard it. Well, Yurk here lets you discard that card so that when you get to the filling up your hand stage of your turn, you can fill up to one more card. Also, right, this is a quite nice thing to play with Banish, because if your opponent has put a creature into your archives that you really don't want, you can draw it out of your archives and then discard it with Yurk. Yay! Now, the last card that's been revealed was one of these stealthily revealed ones where we had a little montage on the website, and then this just so happened to be in it. It is an action card called Not Finished With You. You get an Ember bonus, which is nice. And when you play it, you shuffle any number of creatures from your discard pile into your deck. I adore this card. I think this is an absolutely brilliant, wonderful card. Because we keep talking in loads of these videos about all of these creatures that have coming into play abilities. Like we talked about with Urchin, like we talked about with Charette. And generally speaking, a lot of these creatures, what we really want is to use their coming into play ability. Get them in the discard, get them back and use their coming into play ability. Generally, what you have to do is wait for them to be destroyed. And then you have to wait until you run out of deck. Then you shuffle your discard pile into your deck. Then you're off and rolling. Well, what you can do with Not Finished With You is 
get these creatures destroyed, maybe even using something like an unlocked gateway, and then play Not Finished with you to get them all back earlier than you otherwise would. Bearing in mind that if you shuffle your discard pile and it becomes your deck, let's say you've got 30 cards. Whereas if you've got a 10 card deck and you shuffle four cards back, then you've got a 14 card deck. My point being, if you're just shuffling the creatures you want into your deck, rather than turning your discard pile into your deck, the chances are that you will have a greater chance of drawing into those creatures you want quickly. I really like not finished with you. And remember, it doesn't say this creatures, it's any creature. So if you're knowing that you're going to have a shadows turn next turn, you can get three really good shadows creatures back into your deck. And remember, you draw cards at the end of your turn. So there is absolutely a possibility here that not finished with you shuffles your shadow creatures you want back into your deck. You then draw those creatures ready to use your very next turn. This is one of my very favorite cards we've seen so far from set 2, Age of Ascension. I think it's going to be very nice indeed. And those, ladies and gentlemen, are the cards from this that we have had revealed so far from Wave 2. I'm a fan of this. I love this house. It is my wife's favorite house, incidentally. She loves annoying me playing this. And I must confess, I like this for the same reason. It's an annoying house that tries to slow you down. And there is nothing we've seen from Wave 2 yet, which makes us think that it's going to be any different at all. But this is a part of the video where you tell me what you think of all these lovely Wave 2 cards. Go nuts in the comment section, ladies and gentlemen. But please do remember the rule. Be nice, would you? And then make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel. And follow me on Twitter at the Wossy, where we talk about games. Because I like talking about games. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time. Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching Wossy Plays.